The U.S. has surpassed 4 million positive COVID-19 tests, but some experts are saying there is no need to panic about those numbers. One of those people is none other than Dr. Scott Atlas, who rejoins us to talk more about that and why we need to stay calm with those numbers. Dr. Atlas, as always, I look forward to our chats. Welcome back to KUSI. Thanks for having me. I'm going to allow you to start with a I told you so moment because the CDC apparently has come around to your way of thinking as it relates to reopening schools. Would you like to expand on that, sir? Well, I think the CDC has said uh, the, the sort of the obvious, which is uh, really three points. Number one, the children have extremely low risk to this disease, far less than seasonal flu. Number two, there are massive harms to closing schools to the children. And those are extremely important, of course, because everything, every policy we ever do, we must understand what the consequences of the policy itself are. And so that means, and they have acknowledged that long distance learning is a failure, that children learn much more from in-person social gatherings and dealing with conflict resolutions, working with groups, that schools provide nutrition, that schools provide health needs, that you know, this whole thing is obvious. It's really not very difficult to understand. And point number three is that it is an absolute national priority to educate our children. And I don't think that there's any, there should be no doubt about that. So they've also gone further and said something that I and others have said, which is that they've acknowledged children are very low risk to spread to adults and teachers. So all of these things add up to an obvious conclusion. We must open the schools in person. There is, if you don't do that, you're absolutely not prioritizing the children at all. All right, so the president yesterday, the CDC and their new guidelines, and I'm not sure if you were able to hear the report in front of you, but the uh, South Bay School District here in San Diego, uh, they're gonna remain, they're gonna keep the distance learning because they're gonna fall under that a hot spot. Would you like to address the CDC and the president who are saying, hey, even in places where there's a virus hot spot, we're going to have to continue to distance learn. Do you uh, have a counterpoint view? Well, I'm not speaking counterpoint to the administration. Uh, the president uh, said the importance of in-person learning, and he said that, it's, of course, it's up to the local schools and local communities to decide that, and I'm not disputing that at all. But what I am disputing is the notion that your previous report showed, which is that somehow buying everybody a laptop suddenly makes distance learning okay. I mean, that's just not the issue at all. It's, it's really ludicrous and it's, it's sort of sad uh, to think that public officials think on that level. Listen, so p people that are using distance learning, reading falls by 30%, math falls by 50%. Half the people don't even show up and don't sign on. And what they're doing here with this sort of policy is living in some kind of a fantasy where everybody who, and we understand that affluent people, they're gonna educate their kids. They're gonna get their kids tutors. They're gonna form groups with other affluent people. We're not worried about them. What we know and even what the CDC acknowledge and what everybody should understand is that middle-class people, lower middle-class people, lower socioeconomic groups, we are destroying those children. This is really unconscionable as a public policy to think you buy people a laptop and somehow that changes everything here. So I'm not in dispute at all with the administration's understanding that it's not a federal policy decree that gets this done. It's a local decision. OK, that's what we value in, as Americans, local decision making by communities. There's no doubt about that. But if I were a parent in Chula Vista, I think that's where your report was, I would be absolutely up in arms about what's going on there. Part of the problem, Dr. Atlas, or at least for uh, a layman like myself, is there's just every time you feel like the New England uh, Journal of Medicine comes out with that study from Ireland with the genome transmission and says exactly what you're saying, that there is absolutely no risk of transmission for at the pedi pediatric level. And then almost on cue, then comes a study from South Korea counteracting that. And then you lose faith in what study do you believe in, sir? Well, I mean, this is difficult. I, I totally empathize with the confusion. And the confusion, unfortunately, has been uh, per 
perpetuated by people who are very smart and have very good CVs. Okay, but smart uh, is necessary but not sufficient here. You have to be a critical thinker. And what we see when we look at that South Korea study, I don't want to bore your viewers, but the South Korea study, I'm sorry, but did not indicate that children spread to adults. That's just a false reading of that study. In fact, that study was done all of it with schools closed. The most important thing that study showed was that if you close schools and have this idea that you're not going to have transmission of the disease to children and their families, it proved that's wrong. It proved that children in a, an era of schools closed get the infection. It proved that adults get the infection. I mean, this is just a counter to what the study showed. In fact, the study's method said, quote, because we cannot determine directionality of spread, dot, dot, dot. They admitted that. I don't understand how people so want to believe it said something else. It absolutely did not prove, did not prove that children transmit in a high level to adults. In fact, there's data all over the world that shows that opening schools is not harmful. There is no outbreak correlated to opening schools anywhere in the world. We are the only country that has this hysteria about opening schools. We are single-handedly blocking education of America's children, while the rest of the, our peer nations are saying, and to me and many others, what the heck is going on there? Dr. Atlas, I'm bearing the lead, but you've, you've taught me that it's not how many people are testing positive, it's who's testing positive. If that's the case, as we break this four million uh, positive test barrier, why was it incumbent upon the president to cancel his convention if it doesn't really matter how many people are testing positive? He canceled the convention because it's being, he's being prudent. He didn't just cancel the convention because of testing at all. That, that has nothing to do with it. What he said was, I'm canceling the convention because he doesn't want to assemble tens of thousands of people in a convention hall when there's a contagious disease present. And that's important for two reasons. Number one, that is a setup to spread the disease. And we know that many people who go... People that go to conventions are going to be enthusiastic and they're not going to really care that they're high risk people and he's trying to protect them. And, you know, and secondly, he's going to by doing that, he would have replicated the tens of thousands of people protesting in the streets, arm in arm, sharing megaphones. That that protesting situation spread the infection. He's not talking about the idea that if you detect more cases. Uh, by testing that somehow that has something to do with closing the convention. That's a very prudent decision. And also, I think it's important that he's recognizing people are afraid. In public policy and policy moves by leaders must take into account the facts as well as the public's perception, because the public fear is the contagion here. And the public fear is what's distorting the thinking and creating irrational decisions by people, including by your own public school officials. Dr. Atlas, as always, I am grateful for your time, and I look forward to our next chat. Thanks for having me. Dr. Scott Atlas from the Hoover Institution.